Hello, everyone, and welcome to. This is South America, and here's Paraguay. Now let's Parago, shall we? The landlocked region of Paraguay is the traditional homeland of the Guarani people. Hunters, warriors, growers of corn and cassava. And everything changed for them in the 1500s with the arrival of the Spaniards, who really Spanished up the place and founded settlements that became cities, such as the capital, Asuncion. The religious order known as the Jesuits set out to Christianize the natives. The intermingling of Spanish settlers with the indigenous inhabitants resulted in a population that today is mostly mestizo, that is, part Amerindian, part European. Anyway, landowners in Paraguay began to resent the influence of the Jesuits, who were expelled in 1767. The upshot of this was the country's decline and absorption into Argentina's sphere of power. But eventually Paraguay said, you know what, I don't like this very much, and in 1813 proclaimed its independence. Paraguay was then ruled by a man with an angry face called José Gaspar Rodríguez de Francia. His humble official title was supreme and perpetual dictator of Paraguay, and being exceedingly fond of the ideas of the French Enlightenment, especially those of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Francia instigated a number of radical changes in Paraguay, including the drastic reduction of the church's power. But the sword of Damocles ever looms above those at the top, and Francia led a life of constant fear, checking every cigar he smoked for poison, and sleeping with a pistol beneath his pillow. Under Mr. Lopez here, Paraguay officially attained independence in 1842, and abolished slavery soon afterwards. The country was slowly modernized and the military expanded. This military was disproportionately esteemed by Lopez's son and successor, who almost erased his nation from existence. How on earth did he- War, of course. Lopez Jr. undoubtedly meant well, and in standing up for Uruguay, he dared to defy the giant empire of Brazil, which invaded Uruguay in 1864. Whilst taking on Brazil, however, relations soured with Argentina, and the resulting war of the Triple Alliance saw little power Paraguay pitted against Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. It was a catastrophe for Paraguay, whose fleet was destroyed, territory lessened, and population decimated. Though the Paraguayans fought hard and bravely, this young woman dressed as a boy to fight for her country. It was a doomed endeavor, and the nation was utterly devastated. Estimates vary, but some posit that over 50% of Paraguayans died during the war, and that included Lopez himself. In the decades that followed, the country tried to heal, and even managed to produce one of the world's finest guitarists and guitar composers, Agustin Barrios. The mustache alone makes him the greatest in my view. Meanwhile, Paraguay's military fared much better in its war with Bolivia, a conflict that Paraguay won and thus acquired more land. But the country's politics had been a mess for years, and there was a coup and more dictators, one of whom, Alfredo Stroessner, ruled from 1954 to 1989. Repression, assassination, secret police, the whole works. Then there was another coup, after which the age of dictators came to an end. Paraguay then saw a rise in economic growth, and the country today possesses a high level of human development and a booming agricultural sector. And of course we wish Paraguay all the best for the future. But as for me, it's bye for now. Bye bye <laughs>